African origin of haplogroup R1 among Native Americans. Controversy surrounds the origin of haplogroup R1 among Native Americans. Most researchers have assumed that R1 spread among Native Americans as a result of mating between Europeans and Native Americans. Although this is the popular view, the archaeogenetic evidence indicates that the Y chromosome, R1, was spread among Native Americans by Africans. This means that R1 among Native Americans is of African origin. It is obvious that the Cherokee and other Mary Indians acquired R1 from Africans instead of Europeans. As pointed out by Europeans, mainly killed off the Indians they encountered. It was African males mating with North American females that made R1 the third leading Y chromosome in North America. Africans carry all the R1 lineages. The oldest R1 clad is found in Africa, not Eurasia. Most Europeans carry M209 and M269 clads. V88, which is also an R1 haplogroup, is older than M209. The most recent common ancestor of V88 was 9,200 years ago. Most Eurasians carry the younger M269 haplogroup. This haplogroup only dates back to 8,300 hundred years ago. As a result, you can see that the Africans carry the most pristine and the oldest R1 clad. This means that Africans, since they carry the oldest R1 clad, this haplogroup had to have arisen in Africa, um, not Eurasia. The first uh, Europeans to settle America was not the British or the Germans, it was the Spanish. The Spanish did not carry R1, but the Spanish were the first to bring African slaves to the Americas. In 1501, African Maroons ran the Spanish out of the Carolinas. Other Maroons ran the Spanish out of Florida. This put Africans carrying R1 in North America years before, over a hundred years before Western Europeans, British, French, etc., who carry R1 began to murder the Native Americans. This meant that the Africans from the Carolinas down to Florida had over a hundred years to mate with Native Americans. This direction of Native American and European interaction is best illustrated by the numerous wars these populations were engaged in and popular European cultural sentiments which promoted separation of the races and racism directed at Native Americans. This racism was not conducive to furthering Native American and European American intermarriage. Whereas the history of European American and Native American contact did not favor widespread mating between these populations. There is a long history of intimate contact between Native Americans and Sub-Saharan Africans in the United States since 1501. There were no Western Eurasians in North America until the founding of Jamestown and New Amsterdam. This was a hundred years after the Maroons had established towns in the Carolinas and Florida. This suggests that the trajectory for the spread of RM173 among Native Americans was via African males. It is likely that Sub-Saharan African males are responsible for the introduction of RM173 among Native populations in the southeastern and northeastern parts of the United States. Native Americans carry a high frequency of RM173. The most predominant Y chromosome in North America is our M173. Our M173 is found only in the northeastern United States along with metrochondria DNA haplogroup X, which accounts for 25% of Native Americans. Both haplogroups are found in Africa. These same haplogroups, R1 and haplogroup X, are rare in Siberia. 
There are varying frequencies of Y chromosome M173 in Africa and Eurasia, whereas only between 8% and 10% of M173 is carried by Eurasia. percent of the carriers of this Y chromosome are found in Africa. African and Native Americans came in contact during the European conquest of the Americas. Thousands of sub-Saharan African males ran away from the plantations to Indian territory after the uh, Western Europeans came, where they found in many maroon societies or lived on tribal lands. These runaway slaves held extensive land holdings in Florida and in Nova Scotia, near Halifax, during the American slave period. There were so many sub-Saharan Africans among the Iroquois and other Northeastern American tribes that in 1776, 1764, and 1765, the governor of colonial New York exacted a promise from the Delaware, Huron, and Iroquois Confederation to return runaway slaves. Although Native American nations gave this promise to the governor, no slaves were ever returned. This is very interesting given the presence of R M173 haplogroup among many American Indian groups. Haplogroup R M173 among North American Algonquin groups range from Ojibwa, 79%, Chippewayan, 62%, Seminoles, 50%, Cherokee, 47%, Dogrib, 40%, and Papago, 38%. So as you can see, these Native American groups carried much, much, much African ancestry. Europeans hated Afro-Americans because once we could read, we exposed the lies they teach us history. They have been trying to teach a false history. They have been trying to teach a history that Africans didn't mate with Native Americans. They have been trying to teach a false history that there were no, no black Indians in America before the white man. There were black Indians in America before the white man. Europeans generally and their Negro lackeys tried to deny the fact many black Indians lived in America when Europeans arrived so they can erase our heritage as founders of civilization here in the Americas. Just like Europeans invented the myth of the true Negro, they invented the myth of the Native American and imposed on us the idea that Native Americans all look like the nomadic tribes the United States fought in the Southwest, for example, the Apache. But this is not true. In reality, American Indians varied in appearance, and many of the settled agricultural Indian groups in the North and South were blacks, many dating back to the Malay discovery of America. It is said that many of our grandparents died without telling us our heritage. My wife's mother came from Alabama and her father from Georgia. Both of my parents came from Mississippi. My wife's grandfather was Cherokee, and her great-grandmother on her mother's side was an Indian who could not speak English. My mother told us that we were part Choctaw. Back at DuSable High School in Chicago in 1968, I did a survey and found that 60% of the students in my senior class were part Indian. When Gates did his special on celebrity Afro-American DNA, he was surprised that many of the light-skinned people who thought they had Indian heritage did not, while Oprah, was, who was dark, did. If he would have known that R1 was probably spread among North American Indians by Africans, he would have been able to fully illuminate us on the heritage of African Americans and their relationship with American Indians. Sadly, Establishment Afro-Americans lack the ability to think for themselves and as a, result, as a result allow other outsiders to define us. Yes, we are an African people, but we are Native American people too.